Shalom. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Oh, uh, today I didn't give notification that I'm coming live. But I want us to study the word of God. Just a quick one. I'm not going to keep long. It's just an explanation of the scripture. Baptism. I know many are confused and many have a lot of questions on baptism. You know, I can't pick everybody's call to explain things to you. So there are some topics and some questions. When it keeps coming, I have to do it as a general topic to explain for people to understand. Uh, the whole of this week, I've been getting messages on questions on baptism, questions on baptism. So I decided for us all to join together and study the Bible, what the Bible says about baptism. Because many people feel or they see themselves, oh, I am baptized. But it is not the right way. It is not the, the biblical baptism. It is not a biblical baptism. Hallelujah. Wherever you are connecting from, I welcome you once again. Wherever you are connecting from, I welcome you once again. Madam Rahel, I'm doing well by the grace of God. I hope you all are doing well. Please, as soon as you join, you do well to share. Because many people don't know we are coming live. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we have met once again. I pray that you are the master teacher. I pray you come and sit on the seat and speak through me. Let me speak of your word. Let me speak of your counsel. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. I know many of you have been baptized. That is the first thing you are supposed to do. That is the first thing you are supposed to do as soon as you receive Christ. As soon as you believe in Jesus Christ. The first thing you are supposed to do is to baptize. Is to go through baptism. Khadija, you are welcome, my dear. Is to go through baptism. You know, in some churches, they believe in sprinkling of water. That is a, a different doctrine. And it is biblical. I will prove it to you in the Bible. No, me, I am the type of a person. I don't take some part of the Bible and preach because it will favor me or it will not favor me. I speak as it is in the word. You know, many people, many churches, especially the church of the Roman Catholic, the Presbyterian, and some of the Anglicans, they sprinkle water. They baptize people by sprinkling water on the person. And it is biblical. It is biblical. It is biblical. Let me first of all prove that thing to you in the Bible so that we move through Christ's baptism. Let me first of all prove that thing to you, the one that they sprinkle water. It is biblical. Open your Bible. Go with me. Go with me to the prophet Ezekiel. Open your Bible. If you don't have Bible, I hope you have Bible apps. I want you to open the scripture as I, as I quote so that you will not say I'm quoting out of context because we are here to study the word of God in just a few minutes and we go and sleep. Hallelujah. Yes. Ezekiel chapter number 36. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36 verses number 23 going. Ezekiel 36 verses number 23 going. Open your Bible there for me. God bless you. I read. I read the verse number 23. Ezekiel 36 23 say, And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned. Just a minute. Just a minute. Yes. Yes. <laughs> He said, and I will sanctify my name, which was profaned among the hidden, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the hidden shall know that I am the Lord, said the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. The verse number 24, he said, for I will take you from among the hidden and gather you out of all nations and will bring you into your own land. Then... 
will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all filthiness and from all adults, and and will I from all adults will I clean you, and a new heart also will I give to you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of fresh hallelujah so when you see churches sprinkling water this is the 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 the, the foundation of that doctrine it is biblical you know when i see some pastors condemning oh this is not that those that sprinkle it is not scriptural it is in the bible if you go and say it is not scripturalized, that means you don't read your Bible. It is in the in the Bible. But when Christ Jesus came, we are all following the steps of Jesus Christ. Jesus came and changed it. He came and changed it. This was old. The new baptism. Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 3. The book of Matthew chapter 3. Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 3, where Jesus Christ was baptized. Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, verse number, verse number 6. Let me start from verse number 4 so that you understand. Matthew chapter 3, it talks about John the Baptist that was baptized and when Jesus Christ went to him. Verse number 4 says, And the same John has his raiment of camel's hair and a, and a leaden gather about his loaning, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around Jordan, ran about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So before you go through baptism, the first thing you are supposed to do is to confess your sins. Confess the number of times you've caused abortion. Confess the number of times you have sinned. Everything that you think of it that you have done wrong. Before you agree for you to be baptized, you have to first of all do confession. You have to confess. So the people, they went to John the Baptist in the river Jordan for them to be baptized. First of all, they confess their sin. The reason why we do not, it is not scripturalized for you to baptize a child. A child doesn't know ill. He doesn't know evil. He doesn't know wrong. Baptism is for people who knows good and evil. People who can be able to differentiate between good and evil. So when I see churches baptizing children, it is not in the Bible to baptize children. It is not written anywhere that children were baptized in the Bible. So as we are studying, you understand so many things. So the people went to Jordan. They did not go to a pool. They didn't go to swimming pool. They went to a river. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. Verse 7 says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, came to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruit meat of repentance. Verse number 9 says, And think not to say within yourself, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Verse number 10 says, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Wherefore, therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Hallelujah. Verse number 11 is, I just want to pause so that everybody will just go there. The verse number 11 says, I indeed baptize you with water. Unto repentance, I indeed baptize you with water into repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and the fire. Hallelujah. Let me pause and explain this thing to you. 
When you are when you go through baptism, it is not all. We have two types of baptism. Water baptism, which is you are baptizing for, of what? Of repentance, just for your sins, just to cleanse you. The second baptism is the laying of hand, which is the impartation that they need to impart to you for you to receive the fire and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I'll prove that to you in the Bible. I'll prove it to you in the Bible. After you have been emerged in water, if you have any question, it is not preaching, it is Bible studies. I'm just explaining things. So anything that you do not understand, bring your questions. Don't let me finish before you chase me at the back door. Drop the question and I will answer you. It is just half hour, half hour and we go to bed. He said, indeed, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Many of you have gone through water baptism, but the impartation you did not receive the impartation. The pastor that, that, that baptized you, he himself didn't have the Holy Spirit to impart to you. So many are baptized now, they can't speak in tongues. Many have gone through baptism, they don't know what to talk about tongues. They don't know what to talk about tongues. Their baptism is the baptism of the Apollos. Acts chapter 19. The book of Acts chapter 19. Put your hand here. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 19. We will come back to the book of uh, Matthew. Since we want to understand whatever that we are explaining. Acts chapter number 19. Verse number 1 going. Says, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Yes, so these people have been baptized by a man called Apollo. When you read Acts chapter 18, it will speak to you, to, uh, to, uh, to describe who that Apollo was. Apollo was somebody that was a graduate. Somebody that was, that was, that was good in, in, in studying scriptures. So he studied the word of God. He did not have any Holy Spirit. Apollo didn't receive as God chose Paul. No, Apollo didn't have it that way. Apollo was very brilliant. He can study something and he can stand in public and, and teach you. So when the people get to know that, oh, he's very good in explaining the Bible, they put him, they, 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 they introduce him to the, the disciples to take him as one of the disciples. So he was going around about teaching the baptism of John the Baptist. But Paul was with the Holy Spirit when they baptized, he laid hands on people to impart, to impart the Holy Ghost into the person, into the people. Hallelujah. So when he went to this place, he asked the disciples. He saw 12 of them. They have believed Christ. They have gone through baptism. So Apostle Paul asked them, when you believe, did you receive the Holy Spirit? As I'm asking you this moment, many of you have believed in Christ. Many of you have baptized, but no Holy Spirit. You ask yourself why. Some people keep asking questions in my, in my inbox. Mommy, how do I speak tongues? How do I receive the tongues? How? How can I receive it? Because when I see people praying in tongues, I really, it, it really attracts me. I love it. How do I? How can I speak in tongues? You know, tongues, you, just, you, you can't just wake up and begin to speak in tongues. After you go through baptism, when you are being baptized, when you finish, the man of God that baptized you have to lay hands on you to impact the Holy Ghost into you. And I will prove to you in the Bible, since it's Bible studies, let's proceed. The verse number 2, Acts chapter 19, verse number 2. 
No, verse number three, sorry. It said, and he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? And they said, unto John, John's baptism. Unto what then were you baptized? That you did not receive the Holy Ghost. And they say we were baptized into John's baptism. And when we go back to Matthew chapter 3, we remember John the Baptist said, I baptize people into repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier and stronger than me. He will baptize you with Holy Ghost and with fire. So when you go through the John the Baptist baptism, you still need the impartation of the Holy Ghost. That is why you need a genuine man of God with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit in him to baptize you and to impact you. To impact you. Yes, not everybody qualifies to baptize. I know some of you, that question will come. That who qualifies to baptize? Who qualifies to take, to take people through baptism? And if in that baptism, how do we do it? Some churches, they will dip you, we baptize you in the name of our, uh, uh, in the name of the Father, they bring you up. In the name of the Son, they, they put you and they bring you up. In the name of the Holy Ghost, they put you and they bring you up. It is wrong. It is not in the scripture. It is not breaker. Baptism is just once. We baptize you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, then we, we dip you. We baptize you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. We dip you and we bring you out. That is the, that is the, acceptab the acceptable way of baptism in the scripture. So maybe you are watching me right now. You have gone through your baptism. You were baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy, Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Go back and baptize again. Go back and baptize again. Maybe you are watching me. You took your baptism through a pool. Swimming pool. You know, one day I will do that illustration. I, I once spoke of it as baptism in swimming pool. You can baptize in swimming pool. But when you finish baptizing one person, you have to open the water and let the water go. Because you have cleansed somebody's filthiness. When we read the Ezekiel chapter number 36, when God Almighty promised the children of Israel, I'm going to clean all your filthiness from you. I'm going to wash all, all of it. So the meaning of baptism is that you are cleaning the person. You are making the person pure. You are dipping the person to die with Christ and to rise up as a new creature. As the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 5, verse 17, it said, When you come to Christ, you become a new creature. The old things are past. Behold, everything becomes new. So the new ways, when they dip you into the water and you come out, you are a new creature. So they have to let the water go. If the water is not, if the water is not flowing and they dip another person, it is wrong because if I'm a fornicator, if I'm an arm robber, if I have a spiritual marriage, if I've been, I, I am I'm an adult worshiper and I come for baptism and they finish dipping me into the swimming pool. After they finish emerging me into the swimming pool, I come out and another person come. The person, he, he doesn't know anything and they dip that person. Don't you know all these things that was on me? Will get it to transfer to that person. That is why many of you, the other time I was telling you, many of you after baptism, after you went through that pool baptism, then you started having dream of people having sexual intercourse with you. Many will not believe, but it is true. Then you started having dreams. So, 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 so kinds of demonic dreams. It is because you entered into the water and you came out with something that somebody have come to reject into that pool. For instance, let me explain for you to understand. For instance, I go to the swimming pool. This clothing on me is very dirty and I remove it and I wash it. Maybe there is stains of blood, there is mud, there is so many smell, bad odor. 
inside this clothing and I dip it inside the pool and I wash it. After I finish, I don't let the, I don't open the outlet for the water to go. And I allow it and another person come and also clean, wash her dirty clothing or wash his filthy clothing. The water still remains filthy. It is not green. Let me set another example for you to understand. The reason why baptism in swimming pool is not good. It is not good. It is never, never good. If you are watching me and you have gone through said baptism, go and find where they are baptizing people in river. Where they are baptizing people in river and let them suck you into the water and bring you out. That is all. After that, they pray for you. They impact you for you to receive the Holy Ghost. That is all. That is all. Don't go for pool, swimming pool. That does not go. If they are baptizing you in your own swimming pool, you can fill the water. After they finish baptizing you, you can let it go. It is good because it is going. Your sins are going. Your sins are going. When they put you into the water and you come out, you have you are clean. Everything is pure. Don't let them put your son. What the stains on you will transfer to your son. That stains that you are rejecting. After you allow them to put you and they put your son, they put your daughter. It is, it, it is like you are transferring from one to the other. By the time you finish, one, one is not clean. One is not clean. So do not, I do not encourage pool baptism. I don't encourage. But in situations or in areas where they can't get water, we have no option. But they should do it in the right way. Maybe in a desert land, and missionaries have gone there to win souls. They've gotten 10 souls and they want to baptize them. There is no river them. They can't leave them and say, oh, we can't leave them unbaptized. We have to baptize them. They can get a swimming pool. When they put one person finish, they should let the water go and they fill it with an, a new water. Let another one go. Let the water go and they fill it with another water. For that, it is good. For that kind of baptism, it is good. Listen to the book of Acts chapter 19. When Apostle Paul went to Ephesus, these 12 believers, disciples that have believed and accepted Jesus Christ, and that were, that were baptized by Apollo, they have to see, you know, see it's not, it's not bad. Because when you study the Bible, the first baptism took place in the sea. That is the, the, the time God Almighty baptized all the Israels in the Red Sea. Yes. That is where, that is where the first baptism took place. The day that he patterned the Red Sea for them to pass through, it was their forms of, of remission. It was a form of them receiving their baptism, cleansing them. So when they passed through the Red Sea, they were all clean. So see baptism, it is not wrong. Baptizing people in the sea is not wrong. The only wrong, that is not doctrine. That is not, that wasn't done by the apostles. The baptism that wasn't done by the apostles were the sprinkling of water. It is not written anywhere in the New Testament that any of the apostles sprinkle water on anybody. No. When you read the book of Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, because of that we can read all the scriptures. Acts chapter 8, you can write it when you go read it. The Bible said the day that the Ethiopian Enoch, the Ethiopian Enoch, the day that he was reading the book of Isaiah, and God took the spirit of Philip to go and explain what he was reading, because he came to worship God and he was returning he was returning and he was reading the book of Isaiah and he did not understand so God have to or just prompt Philip to go and explain after he explained to the Ethiopian image the man said what do I do what is hindering me of, of from baptism so he, he baptized him in the river and immediately after the baptism, he disappeared. Yes. So all from Matthew chapter number 
3 to the book of John chapter 3 about Nicodemus. Let's go and read. Let us, please, let us finish the act before we go to John chapter 3 so that you understand. At chapter 19, we have gotten to the verse number 4. He said, then Paul, then said Paul, John, very uh, baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Verse 5 says, so when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul has laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they speak with tongues and prophesy. Hallelujah. After they agreed for Apostle Paul to baptize them in river, putting them in river, baptizing them only in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, not in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. No, it is wrong. They, he baptized them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And after that, he laid hands on them and they received the fire and the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in tongues and they prophesied. Who baptized you? Before we go to the book of John, somebody is asking a question. Say, what, of, what about the Presbyterian? The Presbyterian, are they, baptized, are they, are they sprinkled water? Or they are baptizing in pool. If you have, if you, if you, if your, if your baptism was sprinkling of water, it is not wrong for you to go for another baptism. When you see anywhere that they are baptizing, and you know the man of God is an apostle, it's not a prophet, not this charlatan. So many of you, you are being baptized by charlatans, and they have initiated you into the demonic kingdom, because who baptizes you really matters. Who baptized you really, really matters. Apollo was a preacher. Apollo was a teacher. But he didn't have the Holy Ghost. He did not have the Holy Spirit. So he baptized, but he couldn't impact. When somebody baptized you, the person will impact his source or his spirit, his powers, he will impact. So if you are baptized by a fake pastor, a fake teacher, somebody that teaches fables, somebody that teaches doctrine that is not in the Bible. If you allow such a person to baptize you, he will initiate you into the kingdom where he belongs to. I must tell you the truth. It is better you stay and you don't baptize than going for a wrong person to baptize you. Going for a wrong person to baptize you is dangerous. Because let's let's you know just, just just let us let us understand things here. If Apostle Paul was having a demonic spirit or was connected to the to the to the spirit of Baal, and after baptism he just lay his hands. Ask yourself, what spirit was he impacting? The spirit from Baal. The spirit from Baal. The reason why nowadays we have a lot of revelations. We have a lot of confused dreams because the person that impacted them after baptism was not connected to a good source. So they initiated them into the evil world. So they will be seeing all kinds of strange, strange, strange things. Rem, demonic rams. Their, their eyes are only open to demonic rams. Their eyes are open to rams that are not, that are not God rams. Demonic realms, so they will come out with all kinds of confusing dreams, confusing revelations, because the Bible is the master, the devil is the master, he is the father of all deception, the devil is the master of all lies. So, all the time when you are being baptized and impacted by a wrong person, that you get connection there, all the time they'll bring you revelations. Because after you go through baptism, you receive the fire and you receive, you can even prophesy. You can prophesy. So many people, after they go through this baptism, you see, there they start having dreams, dreams, confusing dreams, dreams that when you compare to the Bible, you know it doesn't match, it contradicts. Such dreams, when you compare to the Bible, you can, you know, you see their dream. Doesn't match with the word of God. Yes, so because they had as a dream, they want you to believe it. 
This is what is bringing confusion in the body of Christ. This is what many people do not know. Do not know. It is not a fake. Don't allow any fake pastor to baptize you. Don't allow any fake teacher to baptize you. Don't allow any fake woman do not baptize. I haven't seen in the Bible that any woman is baptizing. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Women can assist the men by wrapping, helping cover the women, their naked, and so many things, assisting them. But dipping in the water, it must be somebody with the truth message of God, undiluted message of God. Somebody that preaches the truth. It is the work of an apostle to baptize. It is not written anywhere that Jesus Christ baptized. No, it was his disciples that did all the baptism. It was his disciples that was doing all the baptism. So when they went through, there were 12 people. When they accepted Jesus and they, they were rebaptized, it was two times. So this means going through two times baptism, it's not, it's not evil or it's not against the Bible. Maybe they sprinkle water on you. You can go for a uh, 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 river baptism. Maybe they baptize you in a pool. From today, find a church that they are baptizing. Go and baptize again. Go and baptize and let them lay hands on you. And you come and testify. You start speaking tongues. You will start speaking tongues. You receive the gift of the fire will come into you. And the Holy Ghost will also come into you. So you can speak. You can see well. You can see well your past. You know, many people, they have gone through water, but uh, sprinkle baptism. Let me tell you, let me explain to you so that you understand the reason why sprinkle baptism is not good. They sprinkle, they did not emerge you for the, the, the sins to go on its own. They just sprinkle on you. So many of you, all the time, your past is pulling you backward. Your past is pulling you backward. Uh, Chari said, good night, man of God. I was just looking for how to pray effectively from start to finish and in the order we should. Uh, how to pray from start to finish. <laughs> you know, prayer is a, is a, is a gift to how to pray. You receive it. You receive. The book of John chapter 3 verse 27. John the Baptist said, no one can receive anything unless it is given to you from God. So whatever that you want, you have to ask God. Many of us, we didn't know how to pray. It's a gift. It's a gift. And you know, when you have the fire of God, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, when you pray, you don't get tired though. Because you don't pray with your own strength. Sometimes I personally, I come and sit on this chair. It's like I'm ready to die. But when I sit, how I will function how I will speed, how I will pray. When I finish, I ask myself, where did this strength come from? Because if you waking up from my bed to come and dress up, to come and sit on this seat, I was finding it difficult. But as soon as I invited the Holy Spirit, I have seen to come and speak through me. He will just come. So anything that you need, keep asking God. That is why he has given to us that we should ask, we should seek, and we will find it. Yes. You should knock and it will be open unto us. So whatever that you want to receive in Christ, if it is the grace to pray, the grace to fast, the grace to read your Bible, the grace to understand the word of God, because understanding the scripture is very important. When you read the Bible and you don't understand, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Mm -mm. Because when you are reading the scripture, he is the one in your mind. He is the one teaching you. He is seated in your mind, connecting to your heart. So when you read it and you are there, you are silenced. You see him explaining it in your mind. It's like somebody speaking in your mind. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. So people, after they go through baptism and they receive the fire and they receive the Holy Spirit, when they are there, you see them preaching to chairs. You see them preaching to chairs. They are the only person in the room. You see them busy preaching to their television. Yes. Yes. That is why the book of Acts chapter 2, it says when my spirit comes on you, you get power, you get strength. You go to Judea, you go to Samaria, you go here, you go all over the world to preach. Yes. 
So if you are watching me and your baptism is no, is no river baptism, go and rebaptize again. Let's come back to the book of John chapter 3. Let's come back to the book of John chapter 3 to see the reason why we need baptism. What do we need baptism for? Why should we baptize? With that baptism, with that baptism, you can't gain the kingdom of God. That is a fact and it is a breaker. With that baptism, you can't gain the kingdom of God. John chapter 3, verse number 1 going. Open your Bible. John chapter 3, verses number 1 going. It said, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Verse 2, it said, the, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God be with him. Verse 3, said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, that person cannot see the kingdom of God. What is the meaning of being born again? When we say somebody is born again, it is what we are describing as baptism. Let's proceed. Verse 4, it says, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5, Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, except a man be born of water and of spirit. That is what I'm explaining to you. Except you allow yourself to be dipped in water, in river, and you come out and you allow them to lay hands on you, to impact you. You can't gain the kingdom of God. You cannot gain the kingdom of God when you don't go through this process. I know many people are saying, oh, the thief that Jesus Christ said, oh, today you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't go through any baptism. Jesus Christ himself, he came and demonstrated things that, that we have to follow. He came to demonstrate what we are supposed to follow. Please, let's, 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 let's proceed to the verse number seven. Then I go back to where I have, I want to explain. He said, then which is born, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. When you go to the book of Matthew chapter 3, where we first started, Matthew chapter 3, where you were reading, except you were being born of water, Except you will allow yourself to go through this baptism, you can't inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot gain the kingdom of God. So you have to allow yourself to go through, to go through baptism, to go through baptism. Matthew chapter number 3, verse number 11 going. Matthew chapter 3, verse number 11. Matthew chapter 3, verse number 11. Share the broadcast. It is Bible studies. It says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, than I whose shoes I am not worthy to lose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John the Baptist, as he was baptizing in the wilderness, he was proclaiming that anybody that wants to inherit the kingdom of God, you must first of all be baptized in water and also receive the baptism of the fire and the Holy Ghost. He confirmed it here. And the Apostle Paul also confirmed in the book of Acts chapter 19. So let's proceed. Verse number 12. He said, whose fan is in, his, is in his hand and he will totally purge his throne and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Verse 13 said, then come Jesus from Galilee. Then came Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. 
Jesus came to demonstrate. He came for John the Baptist to dip him in River Jordan. He did not come for John the Baptist to sprinkle water. Just to pour water in the hands and say today, we baptize you in the name of the Father. We baptize you in the name of the Son. We baptize you in the name of the Holy, in the Holy Ghost. It is wrong. It is wrong. Jesus came and demonstrated the right baptism. So when he approached John, where John was preaching and, and baptizing all those that believe, he was standing beside River Jordan and he was preaching to the, to the, to the people. So all those that would believe, immediately they believe, he sought, he did them, he, he baptized them in River Jordan. So when Jesus Christ approached him, listen to what John said. He said, verse 14, Matthew chapter 3, verse 14, said, But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. Verse 15, And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. We have to demonstrate what Jesus Christ wanted to let John understand that it is going to be a controversy in my absence about baptism. So I have to use myself as an example for all those that believe in me to go through. So John understood it and allowed, allowed Jesus to enter into the water. And let us confirm another thing also here. After Jesus was baptized, the signs and the wonders. Hallelujah. Verse number 15 say, And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for that it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Two things manifested after the baptism of Jesus Christ. The door of heaven opened. So everybody, the day that you believe and you confess your sins and they baptize you, heaven opened unto you. That is why the Spirit of God will be released unto you. So when Jesus Christ went through the baptism, after the baptism, there was a door. Heaven opened and a dove came from heaven and a lightning, that is the fire. The lightning represents the fire that will be in you. The fire in you, the Holy Spirit to be in you, and the fireworks of God will also be in you. When we talk about the fireworks, that is what you do so many things. You do things, you don't do it by your strength, you don't do it by your might, but you do it by the help of the Holy Spirit in you. Hallelujah. So baptism, I want you to understand that the right baptism is in river. In river, a river that is flowing, a flowing river, not a, 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 a water that does not flow, a lake or a stream in a, a, a portion of a stream that does not flow. No, no. If you are going through baptism, go through the right baptism, the right baptism, and you receive the Holy Spirit. And from there, you know. You will see. Because you can't be righteous without the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that will assist you. It is the Spirit of God that will give you self-control. It is the Spirit of God that will drive away last. It is the Spirit of God that will teach you to understand. When Jesus Christ was going, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send unto you the Spirit. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 1, where it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may also be. And where I go, you know not the way. 
she know verse 5 it said thomas was so confused say lord how can we know the way because when you are going to prepare a place for us we don't know the way how verse 7 said jesus said unto them i am the way the truth and the life no one come unto the father but by me verse 7 said if you know me ye should know my father also and from henceforth you will know him and have seen him hallelujah i want i want the verse let me just skip let me skip the verse number 17 was talking about this power that will come, that will visit us, that will teach us, that will lead us, that will make us understand so many things. The spirit of God, that when you receive it, you become free. You live a free life. You don't have to worry so many things because God is the one going to direct you, going to lead your steps. He is the one going to lead your steps. God will direct you. Many of you go through baptism, go through baptism, and your past that is interfering with your presence will leave you. Go through baptism. If you've gone through sprinkling water, let them baptize you again. If they have they, they baptize you in a pool, baptism is not fearful, it's not something that is so scary. We don't charge, we don't charge people before we baptize them. No. Any pastor that will say you have to book appointment, no, he is one of the charlatans. Any pastor, when you go to the baptism area, just examine things before you allow them to baptize you. Examine in which name are they baptizing people? Are they baptizing people in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit? Go away. It is not the right baptism. Go to a place that they are baptizing. They will just soak you once. We baptize you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeshua Hamashiach. That is the, the, the real name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Savior. And they dip you. Within some minutes, they, they lift you. You know, the devil has brainwashed and, 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 and put in a lot of things in the ears of people. Oh, my church, we don't, we don't, we don't, we, we don't believe in river baptism because river have been taking many people away. Many people went for baptism and the river took them away. We don't baptize people in a place that when you lift up your hand, that people not see you. No, we don't baptize people in such places. We baptize people in places that children can even swim. They just soak you inside. When they stand in the water tree, the river should be the, your this area. River should be this area, not a place that will take the people away. That pastor, you know, before you allow a pastor to baptize you, another thing that I want to put in your mind also, pray concerning who that pastor is. Pray concerning who that pastor is, because the Bible has made us understand that many teachers will come. Not everybody teaching the scripture is, 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 is giving the permission by God to baptize. Not. Not everybody. Not everybody, because there are false teachers. There are false teachers. As we have false prophets, they say we have false teachers. So pray concerning that man of God. Pray concerning him before you go for baptism and for impartation. Before you allow anybody, lay his hands or her hands on you. Be careful. Impartation. Many of you have gotten witchcraft. Many of you, you have gotten witchcraft. You didn't get it from your family. You get it from where they, they, they impacted you. Many of you have gotten spiritual marriages. That is difficult for you to liberate yourself because of where, who lay hands on you. Many of you who lay hands on your daughter, who lay hands on your son, have taken the, the gift of your son. Yes, impartation is very dangerous. It is very, very dangerous. Do not allow anybody to be laying hands on you. Sometimes when I see people, many of these pastors, stomach pastors, you see them pushing the people. They know delivering people or delivering somebody doesn't mean you should let the person fall. When you deliver somebody and the person doesn't fall, that does not mean that person is not loose. It's loose. It's, it's a spiritual thing. Many pastors, you see them breaking your neck. Breaking your neck. Uh, oh, oh, by the time you go home, your neck... Your neck is so stiff. You can't rotate your neck. 
Run away from those churches. Run away from those pastors. Any pastor that, you know, some of them, even when they are, you know, the, 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 uh, the prayer towers that will be assisting, they are the one pushing you down because they want you to fall. They want you to fall so that they know that, oh, this pastor is so anointed. Mm -mm. La lie. Your anointing, you shouldn't, you should not be the announcer of what you carry. It is proved by this, your deeds, your help, how you are able to solve your members' problem, how you are able to carry their burden to God, for God to answer for them, that will only preach about you, that will announce about you. You shouldn't be the one telling people, you know, I'm so powerful. You are not powerful. You, only God is powerful. Only God is powerful. There are so many things we have brought in the body of Christ. It is not scripturized. It is not scripturized. Like you bowing down to a human being. It is not allowed. You bowing down to a human being. Many people because of hardship, because of difficulties, because of poverty. You see them bowing to a man. A man bowing to a lady. Because the lady who gave her $50, $100. How come? Why don't you work? Why don't you work? Recently, I saw a, a video on the media. I don't want to mention the name of that church. But a man of God that is saying, Oh, where I used to have my service, the landowner, the landlord is saying, I should move. I should move. So uh, my new house, my new uh, church, I need roofing. I don't know where to go. I don't know. So frustrated. And the question I was asking within me, uh, did we call ourselves to suffer this way? Is it even by force to own a church? So why should you allow church building? Build it to frustrate you to the extent that you worship human being. You have to go and bow down to a lady. A lady that the Bible says women are to submit to men. A man you have left your position as a man bowing to a lady because you need something. Kneeling down to worship the person like a queen. It's wrong. It is wrong. No human being should allow. Do not allow him, your fellow human being to, to even bow. When I studied the book of Revelation, the message that the angel of God that was showing John Revelator all these visions, when John fell to, to worship, he said, No, I'm also a servant like you. Do not do that. Worship God alone. Exodus chapter 20, he does not share his glory with anybody. So if you give his honor and you share his glory with human being, many of you have idolized your pastors. You have idolized your women of God. You have idolized your prophetess. So you worship them. You worship them like God because of what they will give to you. It is better you work with your hands. Don't let the members of Gagal. I teach you the ways of God. That is how you see me working because I want to live an exemplary life. Apostle Paul, wherever he go, all the time he was going from nation to nation, where he go and he see people working, he just go and work because he was, he, he used to mend tents. He was a tent maker. He had a job. He had the profession. Many pastors today, as soon as they get three members, they, they want to eat, feed from the pocket of the members. They want to feed from the pocket of the members. It is error. This is the reason why many women that were that was called by God. This is the reason why many men that was called by God they have di uh, diverted. They, they, they have diverted, and the spirit of God is out. The spirit of God is out. All what you are seeing is talent that they are displaying. It is talent. It is talent. It is talent. They stop working immediately. They get anointing. Immediately they are able to heal two, three people. They stop working. Then the rest is all oh, consultation. That is why you have to pay for gold. You have to pay for silver before you see a prophetess. Gold, $500. Say $100 before you can say hello to a, a woman. Just not even, not even to speak your problem. Before you can say hello, you can get a number to say hello Hey, 
the day Jesus Christ will come, people will regret. People will regret. Those that have allowed the world to mislead them into the doctrine of mammon. There are many churches, the doctrine of mammon. They preach about prosperity more than teaching about salvation. More than directing people to gain salvation. They preach about prosperity, 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 the doctrine of mammon. And Jesus Christ said, we cannot serve two masters. We can't serve mammon and serve him. We cannot serve mammon and serve him. We will love mammon and despise God. That is why many pastors, God called them, but they have loved mammon. They are serving mammon and they've turned their back to their creator. They've turned their back to their creator. Do not bow down to any human being. No way. You can just honor them. Show them respect. According to our custom, Africa, Ghana, person, when you meet an elderly person, you bow a little just to greet the person and go. Not to go and lie for the person to lift one of their foot at your back and you'll be standing on you and speaking to others like you are a camel, like you are an axe to them. Because of hundred, they will give to you. Because of thousand, they will give to you. It is better you work and please your God. It is better you seek job and please God rather than chasing money that you did not labor for that they will turn you into a slave. Many of you, they've turned you into the slave in their altars. You can't leave their altars because you eat under their table, because you feed under their table, because they are the one that is paying your bills. You know, many pastors, you can't rebuke some people in the church because they are the one paying your rent. They are the one paying your bills. They are the one paying your daughter's school fees. They are the one paying your son's school fees. So what they, they speak is what to preach. You preach what they tell you. You preach what they command you, not what the Holy Spirit commands you. Not what the Holy Spirit teaches you. Yes. Demonic doctrine is in the body of Christ. Wrong doctrine. When I study the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, there is one thing that I see the church of a Roman Catholic church they used to do. It is not by it is not biblical. Praying here. They, they first of all, when they are about to eat, or they, they just hear, hear, hear. And they, it is not biblical. It is not written in the Bible that when you are praying, put your hand here, put here, put here, and put here. No. They should tell you which, where, where is it written? Where is it written? It is a form of laziness. You know, when you go to some churches, even prayers, they write, they write prayers. They write prayers for the person that will lead. My mother is in the church of Methodists, so I know so many things. They will write everything is methodically. If it's scriptures to preach, they bring it every week. They have a preaching plan. That every week, every week, first month, second month, third month, the messages they are supposed to preach. Prayers they read. They recite prayers. They write the prayers. And they give to them and they recite. So how can such a soul mature in Christ? How can you grow? How can you mature? They write for you. When the great, great men of God, when they are going to give speech, you see them, they write and they go and read. Instead of them going to stand there to close their eyes for the Holy Spirit to lead them on what to pray, what to pray, they will never do that. They will never do that. Which of these? The, this one, me, it is not biblical. Anything that is not biblical, I don't believe. Anything. Because I don't know where they, they, they got that thing from. It is none of the apostles did this when they were coming to eat. It is not written. The disciples of Jesus Christ, none of them did this. Instead of them to say, Lord, Jesus Christ told us, uh, the apostles, they taught us how to pray before eating. Let me, let me read it for you. Let me teach you, since, since it's a Bible studies, we need to learn. We need to learn. If you, if you are fond of doing that, stop it. When you get forward, when you get forward, let me start reading from the book of uh, 1 Timothy. Go with me. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1 going. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 going. Say so now, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils, 
doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meat, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So as soon as you get your food, just say, Lord, I give you thanks this day for giving me this food. Amen. He said, anything you get, not today, now you are going to say, oh, for cow meat, it is an abomination. For me, I can decide, oh, oh this meat I don't like. But nothing is abomination because Christ Jesus has sanctified everything. Say, I'm a Catholic, but I still listen to you. And I believe in the Holy Spirit. Too. Ask them, you know, you have to ask questions. So ask them, what is the meaning of this? And where is it written in the Bible? Because when I study the Bible, I have not seen it. You know, do not just believe anything. No. Anything that when you go to church, anything that somebody does that you do not understand, let the person quote it for you in the Bible. That is why when I was starting the, the studies, when I was starting, I first of all quote the scripture that they sprinkle water. It is be breaker. It is be breaker. The sprinkle of water. Ezekiel 36, it is there. Verse number 25 going. That is why God said, I'm going to sprinkle water on you to make you pure. And I will take away all the filthiness in you. And from that, I'm going to give you my spirit. So when Jesus Christ came, he brought a new format, a new formula, a new doctrine. And we are following the doctrine of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nothing else, nothing more. Yes. Yes. Mm. In Ghanaian language, there is a parable that we say, Yeah, you know, I am the type, I don't call scriptures that will favor me because I know there are many people that have the zeal, like how I have the zeal in studying the Bible. When you don't see me on life, I am busy studying the Bible. I am busy researching. When I study and I don't understand, I go to Google. There are so many uh, scholars, scholars in the Bible. Scholars of the book, the holy book, people that have that have dug, that have investigated, that have read the Hebrew language, the Greek, they have been able to study all these things to understand whether the, the, the Bible was truth or it was fake. Yes, yes, and these are the people that some of us we follow, the reason why we don't believe anything anyhow. Mm -mm. I don't believe any illiterate that will just wake up and use his brain. Somebody that will just wake up and say, oh, I, I feel this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. That is not based on scripturalized. No. The reason why I personally, I have some pastors, they see me as Jezebel. That is what they used to say the year 2018 when they brought their fable doctrine that I stood against it. I said, no, some of this doctrine is evil. It is demonic doctrine. And the Bible have expressly spoken about these people that in the later days, they will come. They are the false teachers. They will teach fables. They will teach lies. They will bring separation in the body of Christ. That is why you see some Christians, they don't wear shoes. You see some Christians, they don't even sleep on pillow. You have some Christians, they don't put deodorant. Who confused them? Demonic teachers. False teachers. They taught them to divert them from the truth. They taught them, and because they do not read the Bible, they believe. They believe. Yes. Some people, they, they oh, I will not eat meat. We don't want to eat meat. Because meat is an abomination. Meat is not an abomination. Some people, they will tell you, oh, earring is an adult. That is what they have taught them. That is what they have taught them. It is human beings that have taught them, not the Holy Spirit. It is doctrine of man. Ask the Holy Spirit, whatever I'm teaching you now, whatever I'm using the Bible to teach you now, go and pray over it and ask for confirmation from the Holy Spirit. If he confirms it, believe it. If he doesn't confirm and he tells you what I'm saying is a lie, reject it. That is me. What, whatever you say, I, ha I need confirmation. I need confirmation from God. I want God to confirm. So if you come and tell me your dream, God have to confirm to me. If you come and tell me this revelation is for you, I, I accept it. I pray to God, Lord, reveal much about it.
I want to know if it was you that sent this lady to me. Yes? Do not just believe anything anyhow. Because false teachers are out. False prophets are out. That are working for the Antichrist. They are there. Now there are so many preachings. Facebook doesn't correlate. There are so many words. As soon as you mention. They will, they will, they will track your page down. Yes. There are pre preachings. You can't preach again. You can't preach again. So everybody, work on your salvation with fear and trembling. As I bring my message to an end, if you have any question, you can ask. Or if anything, if any other topic that you want us to have teachings on it, you can send to me on WhatsApp. I will just sit down, bring all the Bible verses, and I will come and explain to you. For you to understand yesterday one of our sisters asked a question that uh can is 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 how do you say it's welling of trousers an abomination to god honestly i will say yes god doesn't want women to wear let me share my personal experience you know the other day i was i was with my baby boy i was with my my uniform my 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 working uniform is top and the trousers that is the only trousers that i have that is the only trousers so within me anytime i wear that i know i'm compromising i am com i know like i'm compromising my faith i know i know and you know uh, anytime I wear, when I go outside, sometimes I put the abaya, sometimes I wear something good on it. But the day that I was seated in camera, that night, that was where I saw myself wearing no hands. That was my first dream. Uh, my first dream. My first dream. That I, God was telling me I was indecently dressed. So one of the videos, I have pulled it down. I have deleted it. One of the videos, I have deleted it. When I come live and I wear something that, that is not praise to God, that people will learn from me. As soon as I lay my head there, God will come and reveal to me. And I will stop wearing that thing. So everything that you put on, whether it is gown, whether it is short, whether it is long, focus on what the Holy Spirit tells you. Focus on what he will tell you because he is going to judge you, not me. I am not the one that is going to judge you. I can tell you wearing a trousers outside is good, but I'm not your judge. I am not the one that was crucified for you. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. That is one thing that everybody you need to understand. It is not your pastor that was crucified for you. That was what Paul told Apollo. The members of Apollo and the members of Paul, the souls that Paul won and the souls that Apollo won. You know, Apollo was using uh, education knowledge in teaching and Paul was using Holy Spirit knowledge in teaching. So there was a controversy because the teachings of Apollo, it, it contradicts a little bit about the teachings of Paul. So when Paul went there, when he went to them, he said, you know, all the, the two of us, we are workers of God. We work for God. None of us was crucified for you. So seek the knowledge of God if you don't understand anything. You need not to believe in what your pastor is saying alone. Seek the knowledge of God because your pastor wasn't crucified for you. I wasn't crucified for you. I will appear before the throne, the judgment seat alone. You will also appear before the judgment seat alone. So whatever that you are doing, ask the one that will judge you. He will judge you, so make sure you praise him alone. That is all. Yes, most of the health workers, that is all they give to us. We have no option. We have no option. We have no option. That is what they give to us. So for me, anytime I say, God, I know one day I will stop wearing this, and it is not my heart desire to, uh, to introduce women in the wearing of trousers. And if you know my how big it is, when they gave to me, it was so big. Now, now I'm becoming fat and fat and fat. That is why you see it is coming small, small on me. They've not given us new ones. Yes. But me, I don't wear. I don't have any trousers. All my clothing are skirts and tops and long guns. That is the only thing that I have.
that is the only thing i don't have a jean a jeans trousers the i have leggings that i wear under my skirt because you know the weather is not easy sometimes the wind you blow shoo, and you see your skirt and you're gone in the sky <laughs> if you are with only pants just imagine just imagine the embarrassment when you are going outside i keep teaching people when you are going outside dress well dress well because you don't know when you will faint and die you don't know when you faint and somebody will pick you to the hospital you don't know when you faint so by the time you go outside dress neat be neat be neat yes be neat so wearing of trousers and wearing of wigs artificial weavers and all these things it is not good makeups makeups the first person to put on makeups was jezebel let me prove to you in the Bible so that when somebody asks you, you will know how to explain to the person. When somebody asks you, you will know the scripture to quote to the person. Uh, Kings. Kings. Oh, second Kings. Just a minute, please. Just a minute. Let me prove our... Uh, the makeups, makeups Bible verse to you so that when somebody asks you, you can quote, you can quote a scripture to the person. You can quote the scripture. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 30. Write it for me. Second Kings chapter 9, verse number 30. Second Kings chapter 9, verse number 30. Many of our Bible studies, I prefer we have it in Zoom. I prefer many of the Bible studies. We will have it in Zoom. So anytime that we will have Bible studies, I will, I will make the announcement and we will meet at Zoom so that many people can lift up their hands and ask questions, one-on-one -on -one questions. Yes. I prefer anytime that we will do the next Bible studies, I will make the announcements and I'll put the Zoom link and we will meet at Zoom. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 30. So, and when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face, and tied her head, and looked out at the window. So the first person to paint her face and treat her hair was Jezebel. So you ask yourself, what poet was influencing Jezebel to paint her face? Because it is not, it is not written anywhere that any other woman painted her face and tied her hair as Jezebel did. She is the first person. She is the first person to do makeups. She is the first person to do makeups. So makeups and all this hair and a hair attachment and nail attachment and all these things, it was our, our dear mother, <laughs> our dear mother Jezebel who introduced it and it later became the order of the day of many many ladies that we have we have um improved it many have improved they have gotten knowledge of making different kinds of makeups they've gotten knowledge of making different kinds of uh, wigs and all these things yes it say and during winter especially even legging underwear is like your way oh i know you know during winter it's not easy during winter, Santa, come and see this sheep clothing. This sheep, uh, I put more than three, more than three, and I still feel cold. So how can I wear something like this in winter? I can't. I can't. So, you know, when it comes to season like that, dress so that you do not seduce anybody. Make sure you don't seduce. Don't wear, you wear something that is loose, that is not exposing your hips, exposing your thighs. No. Wear loose. Wear something that will lose you. That will just give free. That will not expose you much. Not too much tight. That your body shape, everything is out. No, it is not good. 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 Yes. So how to dress also? Just ask God. Make inquiry from God. And God Almighty... The Holy Spirit, that is our teacher in this end time. I know he will teach you for you to understand. 
understand God. God bless you. Lift up your hand as we pray. Father, as we are moving from here, I pray let your world dwells in our life. Teach us more. Visit your people. As your people are moving from here, Lord God Almighty, I pray that you visit them. You come and teach them. Let them have your knowledge and your spirit. Baptize them with your fire. Baptize them with the Holy Spirit. Open the kingdom of God unto your people. Take away anything that will hinder us from entering into your kingdom of God. So that when we meet again, we will give you all the praises. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. We are done with our Bible studies. God willing tonight, it is prayers. It is prayers. See, especially when it is snowing. No, I know it's not easy. It's not easy. So you have to know how to dress to praise God, how to dress, to praise God. If you don't have any bad mindset, oh, I'm not wearing this to seduce anybody. But I have to wear because I feel cold. I'm wearing these jeans under my skirt because I feel cold. You can do it. God knows. You feel so cold. You feel so cold. You know, this holiness thing have come to confuse many people. I used to preach about holiness, but... The holiness churches, they've allowed some wolves to enter them. And they have made the holiness like a cult. They have made the holiness like a cult. If you don't belong to them, they hate you. And that is not Christ. That is not the doctrine of God. That is not the doctrine of God. When they see anybody with earring, you are going to hell. It is wrong. It is wrong. Anytime we meet again, I will send you the Zoom link. Christ Jesus is love, and we must live with love. He said, love your neighbor. I keep telling you, your neighbor can be anybody. Your neighbor can be anybody. Anybody. Live in love, oh. Live in love, because love is what is taking us, not our deeds. Love is what is taking us. Love is what is taking us. Everybody prepare. Work on your salvation on a daily basis. Sometimes when I sleep and I see people taking shower, people buying soap, people buying new clothing, I feel so proud within me. I say, God, I thank you for using me to transform lives. Using me to teach people to know your ways. That is the only thing. And I thank God for that. I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. My men, let me tell you something. The men here pray well because I saw something about one of our men. One of our men, one of our men, I saw you with a very big white car. One of our men, let me tell you this so that you, you just pray. I've been praying for, but I don't know who that person was. I saw the man with a very white car, a very big white car. And the white car, like two people, two people want to rob that car. They have managed to push the car to a place. But you know, the car keys. It's in the hand of the man. He, he, he has hold the key inside the hand like this. But I saw handcuff on the hand of the man. There was a handcuff. The man was handcuffed. The man was handcuffed. But I saw his key. The car key was, he has managed to take his car key. But they have tied him. And the robbers that want to rob the car, they are busy, 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 busy. They, they are looking for the key everywhere. And the man is so silent, standing there with the key inside the hand as if they have handcuffed him. That is why he has folded the hand. You have been able to receive, take the key that they are looking for. But the handcuff on your hands needs to be broken so that you can run away with your car. You can run away with your car. So when you pray, my men, when you pray... Pray concerning that thing. Pray concerning any handcuff in your hands. Whether it is a physical arrest or it's a spiritual arrest, let God Almighty intervene and vindicate you. Another thing that the Lord revealed to me about those writing examination also, those writing exams in this month of September, tomorrow I will repeat it. This month of September, all those writing and exams Please, when you sit in front of the paper, take time to read and understand before you, you answer. Take time to read the question, understand it before you think of choosing. I saw somebody, the person just, she read, you know, the first question, it was so cheap, she just chose it. The second one was cheap, but she did not read. 
The person didn't read to the end, so she make a mistake. And she, you know, when she, she finished, she said, oh, God. And I wake up. I said, oh. He said, I know this, oh, I know. I know. Why is it that I didn't read to the end? She just read the beginning of the sentence and just the beginning of the sentence and, uh, and, and she just chose it. So when after she finished the exams and she was cross-checking and she discovered that, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, this thing I know. Why is it that I did not read to the end? I know God is speaking to those that are having exams in September and October. When you sit in front of the paper, do not rush. As soon as you sit in front of the paper, my boys, my young men, teenagers are writing your wasi. Please take time before you, 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 you start writing. Pray to God to give you knowledge. Pray to God to help you remember everything that you have studied. And ask God to take away fear and anything that will make you make mistake or that will make you delay in answering the question. Pray everything God first and you come out with frying colors. You will never fail. Failure will never be your portion. In Jesus Christ mighty name amen god bless you shalom if you want to pay your tithe as i've been announcing wherever we have our partners if you're in south africa you can pay to our, our south african branch if you're in nigeria and you want to pay your tithe pay to our nigerian account when we get thousand or hundred bars of rice we go and distribute to the less privileged and the widows if you are in kenya tanzania uganda pay to our impesa if you are in namibia pay your tithe be a faithful tither be a faithful tither and god almighty will secure your finances Especially those that when money comes into your hand, shame. When you plan of going to do your project, shame. As soon as you get money, something happens. Give God access. Give God access. Give God access to protect your money. To destroy the devourer through titan. We don't take your tight. Me, I don't eat tight. That is why I'm doing my shakala work. I don't eat tight. Titans are for helping the less privileged people, helping the widows, helping the orphans. That is why in my ministry, that is how, how we use titans for. I don't eat tight. If you want to bless me, let me know you are blessing me. Don't tell me it is tight. If you want to sow into my life, into my children, if God through this ministry does something for you and you want to show appreciation, you want to give thanks, you can do it. But for your tight, I have given that option. It is from my heart. Yes. Show it into any of our partners. Wherever you are, let us just know where you are. And we will give you the branch there. You sow there. And we gather it. When we get 1,000 bags of rice, 100 bags of rice, we go and distribute to widows. And they will bless your life. And it's going to help you and your generation, your unborn generation. God bless you. God bless you. See you, God willing, tomorrow. If you want to talk to me on WhatsApp, see on top of the video, my WhatsApp number is there. God bless you. Shalom.